Hey Freight Broker crew, welcome to another video on the Freight Skills channel. And in this video, we are going to talk about a really less known but important topic, something that has cost me personally a lot of money over the years, and I don't want the same things to happen to you. So this video is going to be all about freight scams. All of the scams and the ways that people try to take advantage of new people in the industry, old people in the industry, and just all around try to steal, right? So I'm gonna let you in on the top three scams that you need to look out as a freight broker, carriers, if you're watching this too, you're gonna get a lot of value from this because it's gonna talk about uh, what people are doing behind the scenes that you may not know about that are affecting you too. All right, so make sure you watch this video until the end because at the end, I'm gonna tell you the top three things that you can do to protect yourself from these scams. All right, and I'm gonna mix in a few stories here and there of how it's cost my company a lot of money over the years. Okay, but before we get into all of those things, make sure you're following this channel, like and subscribe so that you don't miss any of our valuable freight and logistics updates. If you wanna get better at freight brokering and logistics as a whole, this is definitely the best place that you're going to be. Okay, so let's get right into the top three scams that you need to look out for as a freight broker or a carrier and even a shipper, okay? All three of these may seem like the same thing, but they're executed in different ways, all right? And the way that they're the same is that they all revolve around identity theft. You see, freight and logistics is a very, I don't wanna say old fashioned, but mature industry. A lot of people still transact business with hard mail or fax machines, believe it or not. I come across it every once in a while. What this means is that the level of security is a lot lower than say an industry like banking where you can't even pull $25 out of your account without getting a full audit from the IRS, right? You have to be careful about who you're doing business with on top of everything. And you have to know what to look for because you, obviously you can't just take every phone call and assume it's a scam. If you act like you're getting scammed every time you get a phone call, no one's gonna wanna do business with you and you'll never get any real business done, right? Like I said, the top three scams revolve around identity theft. Now, whose identity is being stolen, okay? And that leads us into the first way that people will try to scam you as a freight broker, and that is identity theft of carriers. Now, how this happens is an employee of a carrier or just somebody who knows the system will take the carrier package of a legitimate carrier. So say we have Crazy Eddie's carrier services and Crazy Eddie fired their dispatcher, Jonathan. So Jonathan takes all of their carrier's information, their packets, their IRS info, all the numbers and addresses that they need, and they get off and they take their laptop and they set it up in a coffee shop. What they're going to do is they're going to use their login credentials to DAT or a load board or get a friend to give them a load board credentials and they'll start calling off of available loads. One of those loads might be yours. So what they'll do is they'll call and they'll pretend that they're still with Crazy Eddie's trucking and they'll call and tell you, I have a truck for your load. They'll be like, great, uh, here it's this, 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 and this. And they'll say it's paying 2,800 and maybe it's a bad broker and the 2800 rate is just completely ridiculous. But guess what? Jonathan, the person who's stealing the carrier's identity is gonna say, I'll do it, no problem. Whatever rate you want, I'll, I'll do it for you. And you're gonna say, wow, this guy sounds really honest and, and warm and he was very receptive to my load. Uh, I can't wait to give it to him. So as they're gonna go through all of the motions, they're gonna sign your carrier packet they're gonna send you their carrier packet, which they stole from their previous employer or somebody else. And everything's gonna look great. There'll be a few red flags that you may not know to look for. Like they might be using a Gmail account. They might be using a Magic Jack or a, a VOIP phone that they just set up for $3. But you don't know to look for all of those things just yet. And so the transaction looks like it's going along very smoothly. All of a sudden, right before the load's about to pick up, they might give you a call and say, hey, so-and-so, uh, I mean, my driver's on the way to pick up your load. They're just a little short on fuel and they want to fuel up before they get going. Can I have a fuel advance of $300 to $500? And you'll say, sure, I gotta get my load picked up. It's too late for me to go to my customer and say that 
the load fell off. So yeah, I'll give you $300. Here you go. You'll send them a comm check or a T-check or maybe you'll Venmo or PayPal them even, you know. Back 10 years ago when I was doing this, there was no Venmo and PayPal and stuff. So we used something called a T-check, which is basically like something that you could go into a truck stop. It was kind of like Western Union, but for truckers. They still use them now, now today. We stopped doing it. So you'll give them that $300 T-check or whatever kind of payment. What they're gonna do is they're gonna take that money, pocket it, and then you'll never hear from them again. They change their email, their phone number, they deactivate, get a new one, and they just move on to the next broker. And they'll do this three to five times a day. And there are a lot of loads posted on DAT every single day. Uh, DAT, truck stop, all of the load boards. There are millions of loads, I think, posted every single day. There are enough unsuspecting brokers that they can make a very good living off of this, taking three to $500 per shipment, okay? So as you can see, the identity was stolen from a carrier who was not expecting it. They used it to get your load. They were never gonna pick it up in the first place and they got a cash advance out of you to run away with themselves. They pocket that money. You can't find them. You'll call the cops. The cops will say there's nothing we can do about it and they just made off with three five hundred dollars all right believe me i've that's happened to us at least three or four times it doesn't happen as much anymore mostly because we don't do any fuel or cash advances at all if you don't have money to fill up your tank we're not giving you the load sorry and the reason is because of these bad actors that have spoiled the industry we can't really trust anybody anymore especially now that it's digital things get things are a lot easier to fake that's the number one scam to look out for Fuel advances. Just by eliminating fuel advances from your vocabulary and your company policies is a great way for you to avoid that type of scam. All right, but we'll get into more of those like at the end of the video, like I said. So let's talk about the number two scam that you need to look out for as a freight broker, and that is identity theft of your brokerage. That's right, just like somebody will steal the identity of a carrier's business, they will also try to take the identity of yours. So how does this happen? Well, sort of the same way. Either a ex-employee can take all of your information and go and steal your identity and operate this same kind of a scheme, or a carrier who you used can take your carrier package and use it to do the same thing. So let me explain a little bit how this works because this is a little bit sneakier and it's very, very damaging if it happens to you. It's very important. You gotta put it to a stop right now. So what happens in this situation is, say that there was a carrier who called on one of your loads and you sent them a carrier package. Or even worse, maybe you make all of your carrier packages and stuff accessible online. All right, this is a horrible idea. A lot of people think they're helping carriers by doing this, but you're just putting yourself at risk. So if you have all of your company documents posted on your website and all of your numbers and everything like that, just take it down because somebody's gonna use it, steal it, and then you're gonna be on the hook for a lot of money. I'll explain why. They will take your information and what they'll do is they will get loads from shippers or other brokers. So like say your broker A, they'll call broker B as a carrier and they'll say, oh, I can handle your load for you at this price that you need it. The other broker will be excited to get their load covered. They'll give it to the broker in the middle here. This is the broker that stole your identity, okay? So there's a load, there's the broker that stole your identity. That broker who stole your identity will then go to the carrier and they'll give them the load as if it's real. And it is real because they just took it from somebody, right? So it's either a shipper or a broker they'll take it from. So the broker will call, get a load. They stole your identity, remember? They'll take that load, they'll give it to a carrier legitimately. They'll send them a rate con, they'll send them emails, they'll even do track check calls sometimes. But they'll give it to the carrier at an astronomical rate. like. $3,000 over what it should be paying. And the carrier will have no choice but to say yes, because they'll say, wow, this broker's an idiot. They just gave me $8 a mile on this lane that's paying three. I'll take it, no problem. Now remember, you didn't give the load to the carrier, but somebody gave the load to the carrier with your information. They didn't use your rate con. They're not using your email address. They didn't use your phone number, anything. But a lot of carriers won't look into that sort of thing. Just, there's so many carriers, they, some of them don't do it, believe it or not. So then the carrier will run the load with all your info. And in the meantime, the person in the middle that stole your identity is gonna do that same fuel advance trick with the customer. 
they'll pocket the $300. It's always three to 500, not usually more than that. They will then disappear. They're gone. The broker who stole your identity is gone. They'll move on to the next broker or they'll just do this again 10 times until somebody catches them. The carrier now ran the load. So it's good news for the first guy or girl, right? They got their load moved. But somebody stole your stuff and hired the carrier, paid them $3,000 over the, what it's actually paying, and now they're gonna be looking for payment. And guess who they're gonna be looking for payment from? You. They will look up, because they won't be able to reach the person they booked it with. They're gonna look up your info, call you up, and say, it's been 90 days, I ran this load for you for eight grand, you haven't paid me yet, I'm filing on your bond if I don't get payment in the next 10 days. And you'll be sitting there unsuspecting and say, what do you mean? I never assigned this load to you. Send me the paperwork you have. And they'll send you the stolen paperwork that the broker in the middle used. They'll send you the BOL that they made, the fake rate confirmation and all that stuff. And you're gonna go back to the counter and you're gonna say, that's not me. My identity was stolen. I'm sorry, that's not my responsibility. The carrier's gonna say, tough luck. And they're gonna go and file against your bond. And then you have a much less of a chance of winning that because just like when somebody steals your identity and takes all your money, the banks don't help you out, your insurance company is probably not gonna help you out too. There are ways to protect yourself against it, there are ways to fight against it, and there are other things that you can say to the carrier to get them to not go after you and go after somebody else. But most of the time, the carrier is not gonna be the one that gets screwed, you are going to be. All right, so, and again, we're gonna talk about how to eliminate this risk after I tell you the third scam that you have to look out for as a freight broker. But that's scam number two, is identity theft of your company. Number three, the third way that there are scams in the freight broker industry is identity theft of a customer. This one is really sneaky. We fell for it once last year. I was pissed about it. I will never fall for it again. How this one looks is somebody will call up with a shipment. They will use a real shipper's information. It's pretty straightforward to get you to move something legitimately. So they'll call you up and say, hey, this is so-and-so from Procter & Gamble. I have a truckload for you to pick up. Can you grab it? You're like, yeah. Procter & Gamble? Yeah, no problem. You got anything else for me too? They'll say, oh yeah, you know, let's get on board. Let's do all this stuff. Hey, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm away from my desk right now, but I sent you over uh, all the details if you can get it moving and then we'll onboard later. And you, you'll be like, oh, well, Procter & Gamble is a huge customer. I'm, I'm gonna move it, no problem. You'll move it and then they'll disappear and then you have to pay your carrier because you had them move it, right? It's not their problem if you get paid or not, if you didn't do your due diligence. So that one's much more straightforward, really easy to eliminate the risk of that, but it does happen, it's really painful. And once you're regularly taking phone calls and talking to shippers and things like that, you're much less likely to fall for it. But again, sometimes these scammers are really, really sophisticated and they just know how to pull strings and pull one over on you so well that they get away with it and it happens to everybody. So. It's not a matter of if you're gonna get scammed when you're in freight broker, it's a matter of when. And the more of these things that I'm about to tell you, you do, the better off you're going to be. So let's talk about three ways that you can eliminate your risk for scams, hopefully avoid them all together. Uh, I don't know that it's possible at all to eliminate them completely, but we're gonna try, all right? Number one is remove all of your private information from online. You should not have your website with an onboarding carrier thing that automates the carrier stuff. You should not have anything available that's not secure, right? That's why I don't like a lot of these big onboarding softwares where you have like a public link where you can join your carrier base because sometimes when you have something where your data is publicly accessible, people are gonna find it, people are gonna use it to screw you over. All right, so make sure none, your MC number, it's fine, it's public info but your carrier package, your contracts, your EIN number, your W9, your licenses, do not have that posted anywhere on your website. Don't post it up in Facebook groups asking for business. Just leave it where it should be in your files. Yeah, it's a little old school. It's not efficient. It's not digital, whatever. Just don't give it out to people who you haven't spoken to on the phone. All right, and that leads us to number two. Make sure you use the phone. The biggest way to eliminate scams is to have conversations with people and try to get to know them as much as possible before you do a transaction with them. 
old fashioned? Again, yes, but sometimes old fashioned things work. It's a lot easier for a scammer to hide behind emails than it is for you to call them up on the phone. If you get a carrier who doesn't pick up the phone right away, doesn't talk to you, uh, doesn't give you the answers that you're asking for, it's very easy for you to say, look, I don't like your communication, I'm not giving you this load to begin with. All right, so just using the phone and picking it up and actually having conversations with the people, like I teach in my program, uh, like my uh, carrier software is gonna be designed to help you do, you are going to do a lot better and you're going to avoid the scams because you're gonna be talking to people. You get a feeling from somebody's voice when you talk to them on the phone. Don't hide from it, don't avoid it just because you wanna be lazy and shoot emails back and forth, all right? You have to pick up the phone. If it involves your business and it involves money being exchanged, pick up the phone, talk to them before you send money or send private information, okay? Number three thing that you can do to avoid scams is implement processes of vetting in your business. Now this applies to the carrier side and the customer side. Now for the carrier side, if you have been following the channel, you might see that I'm working on an onboarding software. Uh, that's almost done. So if you wanna get on that list, uh, I actually put together a complete carrier onboarding guide. It's got scripts in there, checklists. It's everything that I use in my brokerage. It's really valuable. Go right down to the link. You're gonna see something called truckin.io slash guide. Click that link or you can visit it manually and you'll be able to download my full carrier onboarding guide that helps you vet carriers without a software. All right, my software is going to be affordable, easy to use, and perfect for the small to mid-sized brokers to manage their carrier onboarding and their carrier network. All right, so really excited about that. More to come in future videos. If you're watching this, you're gonna see me talk about it a little bit more in videos after this one. So carrier onboarding, download that guide, it'll tell you how to do it. Customer onboarding, you should not accept loads from customers who use Gmail accounts. That's one thing that you could do. Second, you need to have strict checklist of things you need from your customers before you move loads for them. You can't just go move a load for a customer that called it in. You need to get things in writing. They need to come from company email addresses or you need to be getting purchase orders. You need to look up that business. Look them up on Google. Call the publicly listed number and see who picks up. You need to do things, pretend you're trying to date somebody and you don't take their word for it, right? You might, you can get catfished dating just like you could get catfished on doing a business transaction. Somebody could be pretending they are who they aren't. It's very easy in the business world. I could set up an LLC in 20 minutes for like a couple hundred bucks and with that couple hundred bucks, I could scam 50 people, right? It's not hard to do. So you need to be diligent on your end. Always assume that somebody is out to get you, right? Don't go overboard, but just always have in the back of your mind that you need to protect yourself. That's it. If you have in your heart and your mind that you're gonna protect yourself at all costs, you will naturally do these things to protect your money and your reputation. And that is, really the gist of it, just using common sense to do business with people you trust, make sure you get everything on paper, and make sure you have processes in place that filter out scams. What that looks like for you might be different than what it looks like for me. I've been doing this for a long time. I gave you a little bit of insight into how I do it, but uh, ultimately it's gonna be up to you to find a system and process that works for you. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. This could be very valuable to you because I might've just saved you thousands of dollars in scams, scams that I have paid the price to learn myself, but now I have the privilege of being able to tell you what they are before you have to learn the hard way. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like this particular video by pressing that thumbs up sign. That helps this video get out to more people, protect more carriers, more brokers, more dispatchers, from getting scammed. Of course, there are more scams. I'll talk about them more in another video, but these are the three biggest ones. Again, it means a lot to me if you comment below this video and let me know the strongest point that you learned. If you didn't know about these scams, tell me about it. If you want me to go more in depth on another scam, tell me about it. It helps the algorithm, helps get this video out, and I really appreciate it. And it's the best way to get in contact with me directly by leaving a comment on my video. All right. Subscribe to this channel. Make sure you don't miss any more of my updates coming down the line. And before you go, I want to personally invite you to 
the Freight Broker Network. That is my private network. I spend all day hanging out in there, answering questions about rates, scams, trucking, logistics, sales, everything that you possibly need in the logistics industry. The link to that is gonna be right down below. It's gonna say, join the group. Click that, fill out your info, get your invite, and invite yourself in. I'll approve your invitation personally. All right, and until the next video, I will talk to you soon.